this week's scriptures in the Old Testament, it's Genesis 2, 15 through 17. And we read responsibly Psalm 32. And Paul's letter to the Romans is the other New Testament scripture. And Matthew 4, 1 through 11 is the scripture that our sermon will be based on. Calvin Higgins, if you are available to grace us with your interpretation, we ask I you to come. Happy to. Thank you, Calvin. <laughs> Good morning, brothers and sisters. Peace, hope, and love. Yes. Our reading today is from Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, and it's four one. Through 11. His temptation. Then Jesus, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city, and he had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels charge concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up least you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, on, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things will I give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. Thank you. Thank you. The message today from Proclaim is the Lama and the Lord. How many of you have seen a Lama up close? Yeah, yeah. Um, we have uh, herds of them above Lake Town, they have domestic herds. And then about 20 or five years ago, I think it was Cheryl Evans brought her Lama into town during Christmas season and was taking pictures having people take their pictures with their mama. You know, temptations are all around us. And not one single solitary person is immune to them. Even Jesus was tempted. God is with us amid temptations, even when we fall for them. We can learn from them, and grow. Now if you're a sheep herder, one problem you must deal with is predatory animals. Coyotes, wolves, bobcats, bears, even dogs, and other predators kill unprotected sheep and lambs. In 2004, the most recent year with uh, sheep death statistics online, in the United States alone, 224,000 sheep were killed by predatory animals. That's a lot of sheep. In an effort to stem those losses, ranchers have had to get creative. One solution is to pasture llamas with the sheep. 
Many guard llamas are quite effective. They will charge a predator to either stomp it, kick it with their legs, and their chest. They will um, place themselves between a coyote and a sheep. They'll even herd the sheep into a safe area. And they will even prevent the flock from entering the area where the predator is located. Now, some llamas have been known to alert herders as soon as they see a predator. Some llamas also herd the sheep to safety during snow or even lay down with a newborn lamb to protect them from wind and weather. You know, wouldn't it be great if we had an internal llama to defend us from temptations when they seek to pull us down? Now, some of you may have set up some um, things that you want to give up during Lent. Anybody set any Lenten things to give up? There's still time. Oh yeah, a couple of you have. But there is still time to do it. Yes. No negative thoughts. No negative thoughts. Whoa. That is great. And you know, over this 40-day period, there's a really good chance you can change the way in which you think. Temptation is a real experience to us all. To be tempted is part of what it means to be human. And temptation is not something we deal with once and for all. It is something that needs to be done on a regular basis to yield to yield not to temptation. It was one of my mother's favorite songs. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Love that song. <laughs> Defeating temptation in one instance is no guarantee that you won't be overcome by it later. St. Anthony, a 13th century Franciscan monk said, Expect temptation even with your last breath. Today's reading in Matthew is it's Matthew's account of Jesus in the wilderness, and it gives us an opportunity to look at temptation. It portrays Jesus during this 40 days. At the end of this time, Jesus is tempted by the devil. Twice the devil begins the temptation with if you are the Son of God. And that is th certainly thought to imply, is implied in the third temptation. I mean, each of these temptations is an invitation to Jesus to turn away from God. It is a time based on Jesus' hunger. Uh, the devil challenges Jesus to demonstrate his power by turning stones into bread. Jesus soundly rejects this, quoting Deuteronomy, with the affirmation, one does not live by bread alone. The second temptation asked Jesus to test God's faithfulness and says, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. And again, Jesus quotes Deuteronomy, do not put the Lord thy God to the test. How many of us put God to the test? Uh, yeah, yeah, we've done that before. But in Deuteronomy it says, do not put God to the test. We must remain faithful beyond all questions. Faithful to God. Faithful to the creator of us all. Faithful to the one who has created this planet. Created the mountains. Created the ocean. 
created these little children and created you. You know, ask Christians about temptation and they'll likely have some stories to tell you. I can imagine so. Now, if you ask Pat Donnie, I know she calls on God every morning and every night and several times during the day. Don't you, Pat? Yeah. That's somebody I need to learn from. Because we are tempted in our lives, tempted to be judgmental, tempted to be mm, a little on the, well, I don't really need to blah, blah, blah. But the truth is, we need to listen to what God wants from each and every one of us and say yes. Say yes. Now, there are a lot of folks here who do some really wonderful things. If you haven't been to the labyrinth behind the fellowship hall, go out there and know that you can walk that clean labyrinth. Know that there are people who are taking care of this church and they are here offering to anyone who comes an opportunity to feel God's love. The prayer walk that we have in Pioneer Hall, it'll be there for another five weeks. Take some time to settle in to what the prayer walk is offering you. Knowing that it can strengthen us to yield not to temptation, but to give us the strength to do the things that God wants, not just for us, but for the world. Amen.